Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Let me get Nightbot in here. I turned on Nightbot's spam filters, but if he gets carried away, I'll turn him back off because he gets really excited sometimes. So I put up a banner here about coloring inside the lines. Mods know what's going on. I don't know if people are going to swamp in here. We'll have to see. So um, I've got James and I've got Brian backstage, so I will add them to the stream and I'm going to bypass saying hi. I already said hi to everybody. So here we go. You guys ready? ready. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Good hi, Angel. Hi. I'm so glad that you've come. Um, I don't know how many people are going to be on the replay. If you're here on the replay, feel free to leave the comments uh, below. Sometimes you can turn them off uh, until the video is done processing, but I'll make sure to try to turn them back on. So we're here to talk. <laughs> we're here to talk about David Sullivan. <laughs> Gosh, the hot topic, right? <laughs> so I, the the floor is all yours. So it's wide open for whatever you want to say. I, the audience is here for you. Okay. Well, how many people are in the audience right now? We don't know who we're talking to. Yeah, right now we've got about thirty, but oh, okay. uh, we'll we'll see. It's going to go up, I'm sure. Well, I can talk about my experiences. Um, I first met David Solomon when he was going by the name Solomon Stone back uh, probably almost 20 years ago at uh, an author event in North uh, Northern Oregon near Portland, something like uh, Newburgh, Oregon, something like that. And I was doing a book signing and teaching writing. And I think he came to three different events back then. And he was a big fan. Um, he and we had some good chats. And he was always there with his mother. Um, they were both always there. And I, I knew right away that there was something amiss, uh, that there was, he was always very thin, very frail. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, mostly reserved. He didn't talk a whole lot. Right. So he kept... Uh, trying to be in touch with me over the years. And then in May of, I mean, I'm sorry, February of 2015, uh, his mother emailed me saying that, uh, so I think she was calling him, still calling him Solomon at the time, uh, that he was dying and wanted to, to meet with me one more time uh, They've been injured several times, concussions and so forth. Mm, yeah. They were passing through where I, the state I was living in at the time and wanted to come to my house. And I said no, because I knew that there was something wrong with them. There was some mental instability. And it was just shortly after that, that his attacks on me started back in. The first one I remember getting was in May of 2015. Um, I don't know if the person that he came up with was invented out of his imagination or was real, but somebody named Megan, who uh, I supposedly accused of doing something wrong. Uh, of course, I never did. And yeah. he, had, he had zero proof, zero evidence, because you can't have evidence for something that didn't happen. And right. over the last nine years, he has been frequently and nearly constantly harassing me uh, with going online and saying terrible things about me, lying, saying I trafficked him, kept him in a cage as a child. And of course, he never has any details like, all right, wh what state was it in? Where, mm -hmm. you know, where were we at the time? And so forth. Mm -hmm. He just made outlandish you know, false claims. Right. And then he started going on um, podcasts and YouTube channels being interviewed and making even more outrageous claims. He said I was the number two uh, child sex trafficker in the uh, in the world. 
Oh, number one, and number one was Mike Pence. Yes. Oh, yes. Mike Pence. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And the, person, and the person interviewing was just going, oh, wow, I always <laughs> suspected Mike Pence was oh, weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. like, why do you think well, he's doing this? Well, for one, I think it's clear he wants attention. He wants mm -hmm. someone to pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is I know he was uh, scamming at least one person out of money. Uh, I don't know if you want to mention yeah. names. Yes. Feel free. Um, he's docs pretty much everybody. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Stephen, Stephen Reimers, um, he claims that Stephen Reimers is his stepfather, which isn't true. He also, uh, Stephen Reimers is a retired engineer from the Northeast U.S., and got uh, Stephen to finance his travels. Uh, he, he was conning them, he was scamming them. And uh, my understanding is that Stephen uh, was a retired engineer. I think he was 74 years old and uh, was into conspiracy theories. No, oh, dear. So David, I think he was David then, uh, convinced him that I was building nuclear bombs in Oregon and they had to go to Oregon <laughs> to uh, dismantle them and and that's how that started and, and that has lasted it might still be going on because i know that uh steven's family doesn't know where he is that mm. they've lost track of him oh no so he's been a menace for a long time and uh the only thing i can think of is he's he gets money from people he gets attention and he's always uh he's always hawking his books Yes, he is. That's for sure. So he's, you know, I've gotten death threats. I've gotten all sorts of nasty messages because of what he's done. And, and I'm They're glad awful. James is here because I think James has suffered more than I have. So <laughs> we'll let him tell part of his story now. Yeah, go ahead, James, whatever you have to say. Well, I'll just say the death threats haven't come yet, but I am expecting them. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. This is horrible. <laughs> so um, I I have known um, S Solomon for a shorter period of time uh, since two thousand. Solomon, you know him as Solomon. We know him as David. Solomon Stone. He went by that for years before he changed to David, and uh, he goes by David yeah. Solomon and David Soldier. He's done both of those too. Yeah. So when when we're talking, if you hear us talking about David or Solomon, it's the one and the same. It's the same person. So so go ahead. I have a list of about half a dozen aliases that uh, that he has yeah. gone by at one point in time. Yeah, yeah, never ending. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, 2011, around November, uh, Brian Davis and I were uh, starting to work together. Uh, he had come in and uh, visited Grants Pass on a book tour, and I had drawn a, a picture for him, an illustration of his characters, uh, Raising Dragons, the book. And he posted it on his Facebook uh, page to get a uh, fan response. And some of those uh, responses were a little nasty. And uh, my wife at the time, Shiloh, uh, she stepped in uh, to my defense and uh, apparently Solomon read her comments and then sent her a private message. Oh no. You know, telling her how well that she handled the situation. Mm -hmm. And from there, they got to talking and they really connected. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at the time he uh, came across and he said that he was 17 years old. Yeah. Uh, this was 2011, November, December. And uh, throughout December, they continued talking and they learned a lot about each other and, uh, you know, just really bonded. They started talking about private life and Solomon shared that his mother was going through uh, cancer, except it wasn't breast cancer. Um, mm. It was uh, cancer of the face of the neck. And when we oh. went to, to pick him up in Oregon city, she indeed had a large swelling that was mm -hmm. noticeable about the size of an apple. Uh, so it, like I said, it wasn't breast cancer. It was a, uh, it was a different, oh. was a, tumor, a different kind of tumor. And so this this story and solomon shared about how he had no friends no family his mother was dying of cancer uh, she really took pity on him 
And mm -hmm. it, it was her idea to suggest, uh, hey, we'll open our house up to you during this time. Your mother's going to go through chemo. We don't know if she's going to make it or not. Sure. We'll, we'll pitch in and we'll help you out. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, as far as the timeline goes, uh, he says that, that he was taken on January 12th. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can confirm that is false. Uh, I worked Monday through Friday. I only had the weekends uh, available. So we left on Sunday, the 15th mm -hmm. of uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. I managed to get a few, couple of days off of work. Uh, and we actually picked him up the following Monday, the 16th, mm -hmm. and then drove him back. And we stayed at, uh, in Grants Pass on the, on the 16th evening. And uh, he stayed in Grants Pass for about a week, off and on uh, my home, as well as Shiloh's parents' home, mm -hmm. uh, between between both both homes. And you know, it you know definitely wasn't anything uh, outrageous. We watched a lot of Netflix. We played a lot of uh, video games, uh, a lot of books, and uh, we were doing our best to to keep him fed. He had a very strict diet of uh, blue chips, tortilla chips. Uh, baked potatoes, uh, organic chicken breasts, and we, uh, I was working at the time, like I said, I had a couple of days off, but then I went back to work. And while I was away, I would get messages from Shiloh and she'd say, there was a door, there was a ring at the doorbell. Shiloh's father is, it, uh, Solomon's father is out to get us. Oh, no. And they hid in the bathroom uh, with a kitchen knife and some supplies and they were just paranoid and frightened. Uh, and I had young children. Shiloh and I were married two years at the time. Mm -hmm. I was 22. She was 20. So we were young 20s, uh, two kids in tow in a, in a small home. Um, and uh, so he was perpetually afraid of his father, ex-military. And that was seeping into our life. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we decided then to take him away, away from Grants Pass, away from Medford. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the safest place they thought of was um, Shiloh's uh, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. they, live, they live in the Seattle area in Washington. Yep. And so they drove up there. So like I said, they stayed in Grants Pass for about a week. And then yep. the following week, they went to Washington. And, and those individuals want to be nameless in this conversation. Indeed, they do. Okay. So Shiloh's brother and sister, my former uh, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, so they stayed in Washington for a week. Um, on January 29th, they uh, bought a bus ticket and they sent him back to Oregon City. So he stayed in um, Grants Pass for one week, Washington another week. So in total, it, you know, about a two-week stay. Yeah. Are, are, you, uh, are you familiar with the reason that he was sent off? I was filled in a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, if you I feel comfortable I, I, sharing. That, no, I, I do. That's fine. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be secondhand. Like I said, I, yes. I stayed in Grants Pass. Um, Shiloh did write up the, the uh, timetable of events. What ended up happening was um, my, my brother, my former brother-in-law's mother uh, suspected that Solomon was not who he said he was. And at one and at one point believed he may have been a um, someone who uh, was a uh, a missing person a missing person um, called Cody and uh, and that really rubbed him the wrong way mm -hmm. and then at one point um, they tried to do uh, paperwork to make sure that we. That, that the transition from uh, guardianship to guardian was was legal. And then we discovered that he was indeed um, not a minor, but he was actually 19 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't need um, the same kind of paperwork you would for a minor. He right. had uh, a full um, agency of, of where he would go and who he would go with. And did they explain the, the age problem? I mean... It were, or did they assume that you weren't going to find out about that, or like they? You're referring to Solomon and his mother. Yeah. 
I I have no idea what their what their intentions were, um, what their ploy was. Mm-hmm. We okay. uh, yeah, we we just uh, you know Shiloh and I were just very trusting mm-hmm. and believed believed everything he had to say because we had no reason not to. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we surely we could have done some investigating. And his uh, his youth pastor at the time tried uh, to warn us not to take him in. His youth yeah. pastor suspected that his mother was abusing him, uh, malnutrition, mm-hmm. and tried to uh, get selective services involved. Yes. And because of that, Solomon and his mother were accusing him of being a part of a cult, that the entire church was out to get them, and they were satanic worshipers. And mm-hmm. uh, so that's that's the, the picture that Solomon painted. And we weren't sure what to believe it at the time, but it we, we felt it really didn't uh, affect us too much. We, we knew this was temporary. Right. But we didn't realize just how much drama would be, would be involved. <laughs> yeah. Who would, who would know that this would end up here? I mean, never in a million years would you ever think that. <laughs> no. Yeah, so basically now we, we can say with confidence that Solomon is not um, – there's, there's more to meets the eye. It's, it, it's, it's not – Everything that he says isn't completely false. He does weave some truth in there. Um, mm-hmm. they did, we did drive up in a white van. Mm-hmm. He did. He did stay with us. We never. We never went to Canada. Canada. My Shiloh's family is from Canada, but we never took him to Canada. Mm-hmm. There yeah. was an incident. There was an incident um, in Oregon City where they went to uh, like a like a Target store, mm-hmm. something like that. And uh, the pol- the cops, the police were called uh, because they they believed that. Um, well, they when I say they, I mean uh, my my ex brother in law's mother, mm-hmm. who was doing the paperwork, yep. believed that he might have been a criminal named Elijah. Oh dear! Uh, this Elijah matched Solomon in terms of height and build, birthday, and even the places that that known to have lived. A lot mm-hmm. of it really aligned. Mm-hmm. And so she had that sneaking suspicion, and uh, and so she called the police. Mm-hmm. The police did come, and they did arrest him. Oh, and, oh yeah. my! So, uh, so but um, they talked for about an hour uh, there on the spot, and then they let him go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that didn't seem to be the case, but clearly it did. It did shake up Solomon for sure. Uh, and I'm sure that events like these, having been taken from his mother having mm-hmm. been arrested by the cops if if he's if he's not quite mentally um all there mm-hmm. i can see how these these plant the seeds that which in turn grow and twist into like and a paranoia kind of thing too. right mm-hmm. the the story evolves and becomes something that it uh, something else and, and i mean he's a fantasy writer yes so it's it's very clear that he has a very very strong imagination Mm-hmm. And, and it's not a stretch uh, to suggest that that he can employ that tactic into his own narrative, like he Definitely. does with his books. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, uh, I know that um, he has looped in like a bunch of other people. I'm assuming that you guys all don't know each other, just random people that he's <laughs> tossed into the mix. Um he's he's put out these text messages and phone calls and things that's proof and i've pretty much debunked all of that as just kind of far out there stuff um did you kind of get the vibe that maybe he wasn't able to um understand perhaps like social interaction well it, it and maybe like reading people and he just assumed that there was like black and white it was good or bad that kind of thing like either you were a good person or you're a bad person and there was no nothing in the middle. There there was definitely an indication of of lying, but there was one one instance where it became clear to Shiloh that he that he could lie easily, lie without without hesitation. And this happened when he lived with us in Grants Pass. There was a moment where uh, we believed that our Facebook accounts were being hacked. Mm-hmm. This was again a ploy from his father who who knew how to hack into the the telephone lines and the and the Wi-Fi router and everything. So it, was, it was, was one of the... 
Was this a legitimate thing with his father, or is this just him saying his father was doing this? As far as I'm aware, I have never encountered anyone. It was all just stories. Okay. Like, so one of one of the uh, the scares that that uh, was blown out of proportion because of the stories. We had an incident where we had some trouble with the Wi-Fi router in our accounts, and immediately the explanation was it must be his father. So the the remedy was let's go in and change our our Facebook passwords, and then that wasn't enough. And they uh, Solomon and Shiloh deleted their Facebook accounts. So mm -hmm. and then they created a new one under the pseudonym of Debbie, uh, <laughs> so that they can still keep in contact with his mother, mm -hmm. uh, and keep her involved. So uh, Solomon deleted his Facebook account. Mm -hmm. Then he went um, a day later. He had a a call with his mother, and Shiloh was listening in. And his mother asked him, why did you delete your account? And then he, he said, I don't know. I don't know why. And he was confused. And he told her, I don't know why my account is gone. Something must have happened. Mm -hmm. And then Shiloh was immediately uh, taken alert because he was right there. He deleted yeah. it with her. That was part of the plan. And right. here he's telling his mother, I don't know why it's gone. Right. So he, he has no problem. Uh, lying, just straight lying. up lying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just cold. Like lying uh, cold. on command, as if it's not a big deal. Whatever, I mean, whatever serves him at the time. Yeah. Did his Did his father ever come to? I mean, did you ever know this person or meet no. this person? As far as I'm aware, his father is a figment of his imagination. There's yeah. absolutely no evidence or physical proof. I. Just everything is just hearsay. I have mm -hmm. no no encounter with with any male figure. Yeah, that's that seems to be the case. It's an awful lot of, well, this person said this and did this to me, and this person did this to me, and but but yet, um, they're either you can't find them, or they just don't exist, or or they're people that uh, he's just randomly chosen to sort of fixate on. You know, I've only ever met his mother and and him, so. It, yeah. As far as my story is, is concerned, it's it's just those two. Now, um, Brian, I know that he had talked about going to Texas to see you. Or yes, something. he did. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? <clears throat> I was at a homeschool convention in uh, Dallas, uh, Allen, Texas, to be precise, and this was, I think, 2019. Probably it was 2019. <clears throat> And he showed up with Stephen Reimers. And of course, I recognized him right away because he's a very distinctive looking person. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't mistake him. Right. Because of, and uh, they were both wearing masks. This was before COVID. Mm -hmm. and oh, yes, because he, you made COVID, right? Yeah, I started COVID. <laughs> in order, yeah. One of the early things. <laughs> Sorry, and Troy. Like, so I whispered to my wife, we need to go get security, go get security right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and he came to me and said, I came here because I know I need to forgive you for all you've done to me. And I said, uh, I haven't done anything to you. You're the one who's been harassing and stalking me. Mm -hmm. And he was just, his eyes were, what? No, no, I've never done anything like that. That's not true. And and then the very next day, he was on a podcast slamming me and lying about me again. Yeah. He, uh, I Sometimes you might think that he has a mental illness and that he, maybe he's a different person at some time. But I, I just don't buy that. I think he lies on, intentionally. Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe what he's saying. He knows it's not true. Mm -hmm. I think he... Um, he tests people to see how gullible they are. Right. Yeah. With the most wild things. And if the people will believe it, well, that's his next victim. Yeah. I got an email from someone saying, why did you rape and murder your daughter? And why are you controlling Solomon? Uh -huh. Solomon Stone at the time. Why are you controlling him with 5G signals? That's terrible. <laughs> and all these things that he told her, she was believing it. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, well, if I were controlling him with 5G signals, I wouldn't allow him to say bad things about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So oh, he God. finds these gullible people and then he uses them for his own purposes. This is not mm -hmm. a mental illness. This is evil. Yes. Oh, for sure. Using these children's names like uh, Maddie Soto and Sebastian Rogers and Summer Wells to come into our community and pretend that, or not pretend, but try to insinuate that all of those missing children or deceased children are somehow involved in this big ring is absolutely disgusting because their investigations are all open right now. And, um, you know, Sebastian is missing still and Summer is missing still. It, these are high profile open cases and he's trying to place you both of you and a myriad of other people into this you know real high profile kind of thing which i don't appreciate a whole lot because that just takes away from the real investigations that need to be taking place for those children you know it takes away the time of law enforcement to to deal with this when they should could be using that time better well spent actually pursuing things that are real and it's it is it is very vile to to use uh real children who have experienced horrific things to i guess like get a vendetta and and get back at somebody that's that's just gross i, I just i don't i can't with that well, anyway, to finish my story, uh, he he had he was with Stephen Reimers, and Stephen Reimers paid their way to get into the convention. So security said uh, they couldn't kick him out; they're, they're paid customers. But we'll keep them away from your booth and and walk right next to them the entire time they're here. Mm -hmm. And so, and then security escorted us out when the convention was over. They, they were really really good about it. But uh, yeah, he's he's a true stalker for sure. Mm -hmm. I could never figure out what his what his end game was. Yeah. In in the mid 2010s, um, the police showed up at my my door, and uh, they were uh, under under the charge or under the the, uh, the accusation that my house was an ISIS recruitment camp. Oh, yes. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we, we both were recruiters for ISIS that year. Yes. Yeah. 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 The story, this, this new kind of evolution to that is that um, not only that, but now as of recent year, the reason that some of these kids are getting kidnapped is so that they can be trained to, to by you guys to, to be fighters in this ISIS thing. So, so he's, use that and, and evolve that portion of his story to, to meet this that specific thing so it's it's crazy to think that you know we, we tried to help him mm -hmm. we we sent him away and, and i and i understand he would have a personal grudge against us for having you know rejected him but then um you know to just want to see us end up in jail like that that's really extreme it is it is yeah He's, um, I found out today that he called the police on me. Um, and he told them that I'm part of the ring now. Um, obviously very interesting. So I talked to the detective about that and, uh, that conversation ended with, uh, the conclusion that he also believed that, eh, that, that we're dealing with an EDP, emotionally disturbed person, which is the same that, um, that I think it was looked into twice at least in Oregon and the, both of those came to the same conclusion that he was an EDP. So I just, I, I just, I don't understand after all this time, you know, over a decade, how is it possible that he's still roaming around and not? Well, that's, a, that's a great question. For one, he uses false names all the time. Yeah. And he's always getting money from other people. We don't know where he is so we, at any mm -hmm. given time. I don't know where his home is. Mm -hmm. And I had the FBI looking for him, and they said they couldn't find him. So mm -hmm. what do you do? And how can you file suit against someone you can't find? Someone who probably mm -hmm. doesn't have any money. Mm -hmm. So if the FBI could find him, they could charge him with criminal stalking, but they don't know how to find him. Mm -hmm. Shiloh went to... Uh, appear before a judge yesterday and they dismissed her they they refused to grant her the stalker protection restraining order 
<sighs> Why? But what for what grounds? What purpose? Like I don't understand. They they did this. He said that that the judge cut her off while she was still telling her story. So they didn't even they didn't even hear the whole thing. And they, they told her the only thing she could do is is take it to civil courts, hire a lawyer, and uh, open a defamation case. And like and like Brian said, it, even if we were to win, we wouldn't be getting a settlement, and we'd just mm. be out lawyer fees. Right. This, this guy is perpetually homeless and traveling mm -hmm. all over the place. And what lawyer is going to take that? Yeah. Right. There's no exactly. incentive. It probably just worsen it anyway for for you guys. It would probably just he would ramp it up even further. Uh, it, and like you said that, and then you would end up with nothing. So it's almost kind of like, what's the point to to poke the bear, as it is. Um. So so, you guys have you guys have both met his mother, right? Oh, yes. And. So, so he says that she's deceased. Um, is there is there proof of that at all? I've seen a couple of records that show her as deceased. In any photographs I see now, he she's not with him, and she was always had his side back then mm -hmm. when I when I knew him. So that is one one statement he's made that probably is true because she was extremely sickly. Mm -hmm. So that's something I. Probably is true. Yeah. You agree, James? I don't have any evidence, but he did call me uh, recently, I would say maybe two years ago, for the purpose of telling me that his mother had passed. And it was a very short conversation, not a lot of drama, but he felt like I had an obligation to know, which is baffling considering. Yeah. I, you, can't re you can't reconcile that. If, if, I, if I did all those things that he claimed I did to him, why would he continue to reach out to me, mm -hmm. um, apologize for all the trouble that he's caused me, and to inform me of the passing of his mother? Like I had, uh, like I had a right to know it. Yeah, yeah. He, he it seems as though he he continually reaches out to you guys uh, and says apologizes like repeatedly, but then he turns around and says that you've done all these horrible things to him. I don't understand why he would want to continue to contact you and then he apologizes repeatedly it's weird it doesn't i don't quite understand if 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 he was so afraid and he's escaped this thing why would he continue to uh make contact that makes no sense if he was so frightened that he had to break away and run away and to get away what, what would be the point of continuing to contact you guys my best oh, theory is I'm sorry, go ahead, James. Oh, just real quick, a theory that, that Charlotte and I had was when we took him in, maybe the generosity that we offered him was um, something that, that really stuck with him, mm. that, uh, that we showed him uh, acceptance and friendship, however, mm -hmm. brief, however brief, was impactful. And yeah, maybe a part of him still wants to believe that he still has friends out there in a twisted way that we would still be friends and brothers in Christ, that sort of yes. thing. Mm. But when yeah, he talks about us to other it. people, it's, it, it, it's a different persona. Yeah. He, he seems to, to weave in religion and the Bible quite a bit. And I, I personally am not a fan of that to, to cherry pick out a couple of Bible verses and, and sort of use them in a threatening way to people. I, I, I'm not a fan of that one. He did that to me recently. So, yeah, so there's that. And did you have something to say, Brian? Yes. Um, I think he fixated on me because I am supposedly his inspiration as a writer. I'm a fantasy writer, and that's what he wanted to be. I was his favorite author, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so I became his obsession in one way. And, you know, he wanted to meet me before he died kind of thing. <clears throat> so, um in fact, you know, his mother went by the name Sapphira, mm -hmm. and that was a major character in one of my books. So that's not her real name, but she chose it because of my writing. <clears throat> and I, I think he tries to get hold of us to just to see if he can still try to scam us, because my pastor of my church uh, texted me one day recently, about two or three weeks ago, 
said, I've got your stalker on the phone, you know, <clears throat> my voice. Because I, I would teach at that church, you know, and, and we mm -hmm. would live stream our, um, our services. So he would see me there. Didn't know where I lived, but he knew I went to this church. So he called the pastor and said, I just wanted to let you know that I, I want to get a hold of Brian Davis and, and clear the air because all those terrible things that have been said about him, it wasn't me. It was my stepfather, Stephen Reimers. And of course, I'm not going to believe that, but right. But maybe that he thinks the pastor might. Maybe mm -hmm. the pastor doesn't know as much of the history. My pastor is a very smart man. He know he knew right away that he was lying. Mm -hmm. And so the whole time he was texting me while he was talking to him. So uh, he, he was still playing games, but he, he, he was trying to get where I live. He was trying to find out where I live. No, that's scary. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So that was two or three weeks ago. Yeah, I do. I do know that he has repeatedly hired private investigators to, to follow you guys around. Um, and as well as, uh, Shiloh and, and that up into, to her family and, uh, uh, they, they've been, you know, I, I kind of informed that branch James of that, uh, of that part of the family. FYI, this, this guy is hiring people to sock you basically. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it's my understanding that. That Brian, you contacted the FBI or something about him? Yes, I did. Um, I sent them, a lot of the information I sent you. I also sent mm -hmm. to the FBI, and they said that there is a case, but mm -hmm. the problem is they couldn't find him. Can't find him, right? Because he was traveling with Stephen Reimers. Stephen Reimers was financing him, and the, so they and now he's they would missing. Just go motel to motel, and, and now he's missing. Stephen Reimers is missing. Is I don't, uh, his, his daughter doesn't know where he is. I do know that. Mm -hmm. um, so missing, maybe, I don't know. That's a problem. The family, the family just doesn't know where he is. Ugh. And he's an older guy, right? Like an older guy that. Yeah, I think he's in his mid seventies. Oh dear. That's a problem. That's a problem. Um, so yeah, our, our options are limited. People in the yeah. chat are saying, why haven't they gone to the police? You know, why haven't they taken yeah. this serious? It's like several times I've gone yeah. to our local police, uh, county sheriff. They just don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And they're understaffed. They're overworked. And you can't oh, yeah. get a protection order from somebody who doesn't have a real name. Mm -hmm. They can't do it. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. He puts you guys in this position where, uh, you know, he, he does all these things, but he he's just like, you can't get to him. He just keeps scurrying around like underground, and but yet he can sit here and he can throw people's real people, innocent people's names out there, but then he scurries around and hides again, and it's it's awfully interesting because you would think for someone if if he was truly if his story was really, truly for real, you'd think that he would want to be out uh, really pursuing something rather than of being in hiding all the time. If he was truly trafficked, he could go to the FBI himself, but he knows he's lying. Yep. He knows he would get in trouble if he did that. So mm -hmm. he won't. Yeah. 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 For for years, he was nothing more than just a nuisance for me, just an annoyance. Yeah. He would call every now and then check in. I would just be polite and, and just entertain him. You're like, okay, yep, all right, have a good day, see you yeah, later. Yeah, not ruffle the feathers there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't really view him as a, as a physical threat because of how scrawny he is and malnutrition. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's not a very uh, he doesn't have a lot of body mass to him. Right. But uh, yeah, I last uh, last Thursday I, I I received a call from someone and say, hey, you know, I I watched this podcast and this guy is saying all these things about you. That was with Gray, and, right? Gray Hughes. Yeah, he's the one who contacted yeah. me. Yeah, and then I and then I watched the video, and and he crossed uh, he crossed the line. He he named uh, my children. He uh, yeah. Google mapped my home address and yes. and the podcast shirt, unprofessional of him. He just blasted it for thirty minutes. Yep. Um, and and so now now I feel 
that that I, I, I my the safety of my family and my children are, are threatened. Not necessarily from from Solomon himself. Solomon already knows where I live. Yeah. But anyone anyone who supports and believes him and takes yes. on themselves, um, you know, internet vigilantism. Yes. Especially those that, who believe that, those kinds of way far out their theories. It, 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 those are those are scary people. You know, yeah, when you've got someone buying into that. The very frankly, and frankly, Angel, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I can take the hit to my reputation. I'm not worried about it. But doxing a family with children—that's mm -hmm. crossed the line. So, right, we need to somehow stop him. And if we just let the the word out, yes, don't listen to this maniac. Maybe <laughs> we'll get him to stop. Well, I've been trying desperately for days now to. You've been get doing to, a great job. You know, to be like. Yeah. And it, I, it's just been so perplexing because when I when I started to to fact check this and I mean, I didn't I didn't think I needed to. But I was like, are you listening to the same thing I'm listening to? Because I knew right away there was something wrong. Um, I was getting attacked. Like people were saying, how dare you question this victim of trafficking and things. Um, but it just got to this point where I, I couldn't anymore. It was. I was having such a problem with his story and him just blatantly coming out here and putting out information just for everyone to see. And yeah, I, that's just, that's just not appropriate. That's just not okay. You know, even it's my understanding that a couple of the addresses that he gave aren't even addresses that are related to anyone he knows, just random people. So he's putting random people's lives in danger by throwing out their addresses and things. And so I, but then, but then he's angry with me because I pulled up a phone number of his apparently. That's How the dare same, I? That's the same number that he called me years ago. Oh, that's interesting. I, I can, I can verify that indeed. He, he called me and left me a voiceover message using that number. I think it's very interesting that it's called the hack account, the hack account. Which I think that speaks the volumes. I mean, yeah, I, I think he's got some difficult problems yeah, 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 mentally, but I, but that that it turns into not so much when you get to see things like that. When you have someone who registers their phone number as Solomon Hack account, that clearly that person knows what, what they're doing. Clearly, Angel, Angel, did I give you the number that he used to call my pastor because my pastor saved it? It was on caller ID. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. We don't want to bust it out, though. Yeah. No, I'll send it to you in private chat. Okay. Yeah. I'm bothered too because um, one one of the pieces of evidence he says he has against me is a phone conversation that we had. Mm -hmm. I was unaware that he was recording it, and this was uh, shortly after my divorce. Mm -hmm. And during the conversation, it you know I just I go on about you know trying to move on and healing and. So it was a very, very um, vulnerable conversation, very private. Mm -hmm. And here he, here he goes using it as evidence, which is blatantly ridiculous because I mentioned nothing about yes. kidnapping or, or, or children or like, I, I'm just exposing my hurt and my pain and trying to move on from right. heartbreak. And how is that at all relevant? And then he's like we mentioned before, he's apologizing. He's he's apologizing to me, and then I apologize to him. I say, you know, I'm sorry how everything turned out. It's you know, I wish you the best. You know, have a good life. Goodbye. Right, right. So, um, I, like at this point, I don't I don't know what we all can do other than just to share out this message. Um, I'm, I'm certain that I'm going to be drunk through the mud now with him. I don't, I, whatever it is, what it is. Um, but this, this whole situation, him kind of scurrying across the country. Now he's got a, a girlfriend or a wife or something. And now he's taking care of a, a small child, which is concerning to me for a number of reasons. Um, that, a, that a, small child is in his care um and his uh wife or girlfriend amanda is seems to be all in since it's that she's put her chips all in on this as well because she is um working hand in hand with him to to create this fascinating 
for out their story. But, you know, in the midst of it, we have this small child, which is very concerning, especially because we don't know where he is. And so I would do anything to call in a welfare check for that boy. But again, where do, what do you do when you don't know where he is? And, you know, the, the fact first that time this... I've heard about a small child, have you verified mm -hmm. that he actually does have somebody with him or could he be yes. lying about that too? Yes. Amanda brought a small boy with her into that relationship. I see. Yeah. Yep. And there's abundance of photos of them together. Um, I think he's like eight or nine. So that's, that's a, that's concerning. That's concerning to me. Um, I assume that they must be homeschooling. The child's probably not registered in any particular school district. I would assume that would be the case. Yes. Yes. Yep. So um, I don't know what much else there is to say. I'm, I'm glad that you guys came to sort of just I get this out there because I've been doing my best and uh, it wasn't, I don't think it wasn't until people started to hear the whole story from him that they were like, hold on, hold on a minute, you know, because he would go visit different places and give kind of pieces here and there. But when you collect them all and you put them all together and you listen to the whole thing in one place, it's just like, wow, wow, really? Like, like the Vietnam War ending in 90, what, four or something? I would have been 96. 96, I think, 96 yeah. that's correct. Yes. I just, I don't understand how people still believe this. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. Well, what comes to my mind is main character syndrome. Mm, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the tales are so exotic and bombastic and fantastical. And, and I mean, he's the legendary Solomon, the, the one who got away. It, it's, it's clearly that he's, he's, the main character of his own story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his wife is making uh, writing a movie. Actually, I found out. <laughs> so, so that will be interesting. And yeah, he, he, be a, he also contributed to Smallville and the Sound uh, of Freedom. Yeah, and, all kinds of yeah. things. Oh yeah, yeah. he's no. There, there. He has described himself and Amanda as a power couple in Hollywood, as far as writing goes script writing and ghost writing and things so he was claiming to have uh credit in smallville when he visited us <laughs> at, at the age of 19 and at mm. that point smallville was i think already off the air <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which yeah means he would have he would have been a, a, a like a preteen or a yeah it's just the time doesn't add up yeah you know it it would be very interesting to know who his father is i it, I wonder if I wonder if um, his father, I wonder if his his mother took him from his father and has been on the lam, and his father just doesn't know where he is because he's changed his name a billion times. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah, I have a list of aliases that he uh, at one point has been associated with. Um, he mm -hmm. says that he was born in Nathaniel Isaac Hahn. Yeah, or I can't Nathaniel. find anything with that. Yeah. And then, like Brian and I, when we met him, it was Solomon O. Stone. Mm -hmm. um, like an Jeremiah Irish. got tossed in there too for a while. Jeremiah P. Song. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Sol Solomon Soldier. Yeah. And yeah, there's the so many. Now. And David Soldier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You write that one down because that's one's a new one. Song, like S O N G. Yes. No, that's a that's a new P, one for me. P the middle. Initial. Oh, yeah. Jeez, jeez. Well, I uh, this afternoon I I came across some information that Amanda was trying to drag up a church in Texas to include in part of this ring, and so I called them today, and this nice little lady answered, and I kind of told her, try to explain to her. <laughs> Maybe she, she was probably like 80, tried to explain to her as best as I could what was going on, just to kind of warn her, um, you know, this, his this Amanda is, might be attempting to throw their church into this mix as well, just just in case. That was, that was the main reason I reached out to Brian was I wanted to be like, FYI, this is going on. And I was, 
I knew, I knew that what was going to happen is people were going to try to find him and email him. And, you know, I, I just, I wanted to make sure that he was forewarned because it was going to get there. Um, I'm really sorry that this happened. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes people get carried away here on YouTube and, and they don't bother to vet things like that. It's, it's really tricky, especially when someone it's really hard because if someone comes up and speaks on your panel and they start talking about being a victim, it's very hard to be like, yeah, can you just get mm -hmm. off and I'll fact check that, you know, because if they really are, it's hard to, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're walking this very kind of careful line, but, but then when it gets too far, it's, do you know what I'm saying? You want to handle, if it's a for real victim, you want to handle them with care, but he like puts people in these positions like that where they like are kind of like they would feel that to disconnect him because what if he's a victim, you know, the what if, and I feel, I think he's a good manipulator of people. You know, he, he manipulates situations and things to get what he wants out of them. And I, I, I believe he is very skilled in that, not by accident. I, mean, I think a lot of people, they, they hate trafficking so much. They hate what's being done to children. So if somebody comes onto that topic, it hits the emotional spot and they want to do something. And so they hear about traffickers like James and me, you know, and they, so they want to go do something about it. And it, so I understand mm -hmm. it. I, I truly do understand it, but we all have to vet things carefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is this is the best example of how um, the true crime community here on YouTube can can be harmful, reckless. This is an example of how we can harm situations, and this is what we we don't want to happen. We don't want this kind of thing to happen. So maybe in the future, other creators will take note and be like, "Oh, I, we're not going to go down that route again." Um, unfortunately, at your guys' expense, that's too bad. Yeah, I really appreciate you uh, st standing up for for us who, or for me in particular, you know, I don't have a platform. Yeah. I have a very minimal presence on social media and, and mm -hmm. only for my, my artwork. Yes. Not, not mm -hmm. really for my, my personal life. But uh, again, I don't really have an audience. I'm a small time. I'm, you know, Brian he has a mm -hmm. lot more to lose as far as his reputation goes as a, as an author. Uh, so I, I do appreciate that you having me on and sure. uh, giving me a voice. It's not a problem at all. It's, it's only fair. I mean, if he's going to go around on YouTube spouting off these fantastical stories, it, it's only fair for, for the people that he's calling out to also have a, a voice, a chance to speak and uh, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So I'm so glad that you guys came to talk and, and get that okay. out there. The question there, do, do the people in Brian and James's personal sphere know the truth or are they skeptical? Everyone who knows me knows that David Solomon is crazy. So <laughs> no, nobody, nobody believes him. If, if you know me, you know that I am not mixed up with this stuff. It's just absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. so, and every, no. everyone on my side who has met him, they don't, they don't take him seriously either. Yeah. So they know. So don't worry about our personal sphere. It's it's the other people who don't know us and don't know him. They're the ones who can be uh, convinced by him. Yes. Yeah. We're the scapegoats. Yeah. That's that's so sad. And for what? Some personal vendetta, you know, because he he perhaps thinks that you you slighted him in some way that that he's going to do this and feel that this is okay that somehow this is like an this is like equal payback. It, it, this is so far off the charts. It, it's unbelievable for, for him to consider this as an equivalent payback blows my mind. He has to, he has to understand what he's doing. He, I, he has to know that he is putting you in danger. And that, that speaks a lot about who I think he is as a person. It's just, I, I agree. Um, a lot of people think that, well, Yes, he probably is an emotionally disturbed person. Without a doubt, he has a mental illness of some kind, but he absolutely knows he's lying. Mm -hmm. There's just zero doubt about that. And so his motivations are evil. He is not a good person who's just mentally disturbed. He mm 
He yeah. is evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a matter of delusion. And it, you, know, you can tell because his stories are so inconsistent. It's not, it's not one alternative reality that he's living in. He can make it up on the spot, whatever suits him at that moment. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so scary. That's so scary. It's, it's when I, when I saw this kind of unfolding, um, I, I was very hesitant at first because I, I didn't want to start calling someone that could be a victim, a liar, but the more that I got into it and the more that I watched and listened, it, it's so, it, there's just, there's no way. There's, there's just no way. It, it can't happen. It's just not possible. The, 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 he, he almost, he makes the mistake of forgetting his lies from prior. And so when you go back and you look at something he said like five years ago or two years ago, he contradicts himself all the time. You know that he's died how many times in so many different ways, and you know he he had carbon dioxide poisoning, and they treated him with hyperbaric treatment, which is not a treatment for carbon dioxide poisoning. Uh, but see, like a run-of-the-mill person, maybe that's not familiar with medical in the medical field, might not know that, and so it might sound plausible to them. But see, I know that you don't cre treat carbon dioxide poisoning in a hyperbaric treatment uh, chamber, but you know. It's and like you said, maybe he kind of puts his feelers out for people that are, are going to believe him, that, that will believe and buy his story. And also, he thinks he's very clever. Uh, he sends me emails from false accounts, mm -hmm. thinking that I'll be fooled. He sent one from a, an actor uh, who said, uh, David Solomon is my boss, and he told me to tell you that he didn't do any of those terrible things or say terrible things about you. I looked up the actor and he spelled the actor's name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so he thinks Jeez. he's clever at doing these things, but he, he makes stupid mistakes. He's just not as clever as he thinks he is. Mm -hmm. When watching and, his uh, interviews. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no. Something that bothered me that rubbed me the wrong way was he, he claims to have photographic memory. Yes. Which, you know, how can we verify that, of course? Right. When 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 questioned and prompted, um, he would just have an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, their 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 shoes were, you know, they were blue and they were uh, uh, Velcro. And and then this person said this and then this in this tone. And and it was just so, so detailed, considering that all of this happened, uh, at least as far as the story revolving me and my mm -hmm. family over a decade ago. That was one thing I noticed was like how specific he was getting in like, you know, like there were things that he was talking about that didn't even seem pertinent to the, didn't seem pertinent to the conversation at all. And, but yeah, I, I got stumbled up when he said he could play a song by key. I'm like, no, you don't play a song by key. You play a song by ear, that kind of thing. So, so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And he, it, 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 when he speaks, there wasn't a lot of ums and likes and you knows. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's pretty typical for, for people. I hear it all the time. I myself yeah. am guilty of it all the time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but when he spoke, it was, it was as if he was telling a story. Yes. Uh, not, not his story, but I mean like storytelling. Like he was reading off of a script. Like he, he just, it was all premeditated. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of my, one of my researchers and I watched a show um, on A and E called uh, uh, Extreme Cults and Beliefs. I don't know if you, but episode three talks about a religion called the Family, and there are for real victims in that episode. That his some of his stories are verbatim the victims of the, the those victims' stories. So when we were chatting, we kind of thought maybe that he does this extensive homework, and given that he writes things then he, you know, he can put them to memory and, you know, he, it, it's not hard then to take a for real victim story because it's real and then just pawn it off as your own. As long as you've got it memorized, you can just recall it like that because you've got it memorized. But that was, that was really offensive when I, when I, when we were looking into that, I was, I was really angry as that proceeded, to, proceeded to watch that. It was gross. So I, I think, I think that he spends a lot of time um, doing his homework and covering his, you know, 
the the all the the loops and things and um i i'm kind of the opinion of the opinion that that his mom probably trained him to, to do this that he's probably been doing this for his whole life which is lets him be exceptionally skilled at it if you've been doing this your entire life and like you say he can lie on the drop of a dime as if it's just no problem he can just lie just like that that's you know i suppose that might makes him believable not being Absolutely. you know tripped up that's the impression that we got shiloh would would agree to is, is that his mother was uh, the mastermind mm -hmm. and and she was using him um sending him away to what purpose i i don't know like maybe she had some other nefarious plans that she needed him out of the way for for a couple of weeks when we um met her again uh they stopped us uh my family and i we drove to the library in grants pass and then from the library we drove to uh, like a chinese restaurant and that same vehicle from the library parking lot drove us and parked right next to us at the chinese restaurant and <laughs> as we got out they got out oh, and approached geez. us and I couldn't help but notice that the mother was missing her, uh, her oh. tumor. Healed by God. Miracle, I'm sure. Maybe she had a, 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 a infected tooth. It, that can make your face swell up like gigantic if you have a, an infection in your tooth. And then they take the tooth out and it's gone within a couple of days. So, yeah. Yeah, could be. But uh, he, she, she was driving the car, and she was the one asking questions, and he was very uh, subordinate to her. Yeah. Very loyal, very loyal, and uh, an obedient. So I, I yeah, I, I believe she was the one pulling the strings, and and maybe her passing, if if it really did happen, probably did have a, a strong effect on him, you know, enough mm -hmm. enough so to reach out to me, in a in a non-threatening way. Like maybe yeah. for just just for a moment of clarity, he he had a moment of remorse, maybe a moment of of questioning. Now that this mastermind, his mother manipulator, is gone, maybe mm -hmm. you know what does he do in his life? You know where does he go? Does he continue these antics? Uh, in in that moment of weakness, you know he, he reaches out. Maybe it's a to reconcile for to call for help. I don't know, but uh, clearly, yeah. right now he's he's back at it and more so than ever well it from from my understanding his mother died right around the time that uh he started uh befriending his current partner amanda and so perhaps that's been his replacement for his mom is her i well, would sure he certainly plays the game with him you know yes. that stuff she writes like she said that my daughter uh took care of him what was it in tampa or something and so they both know that never happened. Yes. So the, the lion is just bald faced lying. So she is definitely in on it with him. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so when when they were together, him and his mom, was he kind of like kind of like all kind of turtled in, kind of hunched in and just let her do all the talking and he just sits there and it's quiet and she kind of dominates the conversation. I would no, say he, no. No. Mm -hmm. no. He he would talk. He would definitely talk. But he she was clearly um, in charge. But yeah. he would definitely talk. He was not in a, in a turtle shell. No. I think no. It, I believe it's it was a learned behavior. What he knows now, he yes. learned I think from her. I I agree a hundred percent. And that's a sad thing. I think that I think that he's that she was doing that his whole life, like I say. I think she's been doing this to him his whole life, convincing him that he's got all these allergies and and whatever else. And uh, and like I say, that that leads into my concern about the boy that's with him now. Is I'm fearful that he's doing that to that boy now, and that's the last thing that we need is someone else to uh, be a victim of his. It, worse off even. You know. There is no doubt that he was malnourished. I, you agree mm -hmm. with that, James? He was definitely malnourished. I think she was keeping him on a, a diet a diet so strict that he could barely survive. Yeah. And his teeth were were just mangled uh, and mm -hmm. rotten, missing, um, 
clearly. And he always he always smelled really bad. Yeah, not well taken care of, obviously. Right. That's a sad thing. Did he ever mention any siblings ever to any either of you? Not to me. Yes, with Shiloh. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, this is not, not something that I can prove. Mm -hmm. But during their conversations, um, at one point he admitted to being a boy named Cody. Yeah. And there was a, a missing persons case. Uh, someone named uh, Cody Wallace Bast. Mm -hmm. The time, the timeline, the age. The, the hair color, eye color, a lot of it matched. You know, even photos of him then and Solomon now, mm -hmm. there were a lot of similarities in there, their noses, their eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, Shiloh did talk to him about it. And uh, one of the things that you know, Solomon admitted was, yeah, that, that he had siblings. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder where they are. I wonder what, so if he's got siblings, why wouldn't his mother bring them along with that's very interesting. Unless it's a yeah. situation where she's chosen him and abandoned the others. I, I can't. I can't confirm any of this, but yeah. apparently the story, as it goes, is that he had five siblings, mm -hmm. um, and they don't know uh, who. Apparently, they don't know who the biological father is. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know, different, different, different dads. Different dads. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, according to Let's see, Shiloh's, Shiloh's side of the family um, that, who are familiar with Cody because of a friend of the family, a co-worker. Mm -hmm. and, and they are aware of that, of that family, that situation with those siblings. And according to them, the story is, is that the father is a nice guy mm -hmm. and that the mom was the abusive one and that yeah. the mom took, took Solomon, took Cody and mm -hmm. fled. And left the other kids behind, basically. Yeah. And when confronted um, with with the story, um, Solomon, uh, well, okay, he opened up to it while we were in Grants Pass. But then mm -hmm. when he was pressed on it in Washington by Shiloh's um, sister's mother-in-law, that I'm not going to say her name, but by the adult, mm -hmm. the, uh, she uh, she mm -hmm. was pressing him on the story as well. And that's when he became really defensive and really angry. And he took it really personally. and. And then from this point forward, when he would reach out to us again, he would he would bring it up and he would say, stop calling me Cody. Stop mm -hmm. telling people that I'm Cody, mm -hmm. uh, which I found really odd because if we had called him Jim Bob, mm -hmm. we just made up made up a name, then, you know, what, what's the big deal? But he he couldn't let this go. Right. Which only adds to the legitimacy That's curious. That, that there mm -hmm. might be something to this. Mm hmm. And maybe it could be a reminder of a past life that his mom is trying to get him to forget or trying to brainwash yeah. him to convince him that it wasn't what it was. Well, if 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 that is indeed true, you know, it's it's not unheard of for one parent to talk poorly about another one uh, after they've abducted one of the children to convince them that, you know, that the other parent is like a horrible person and that, you know, you don't want to go back to your dad or whatever because he's violent or whatever. It, it convinces their children the mother would convince their children that their dad is a horrible person. So then they don't try to run away and they, they don't, they just move along with life, assuming that that's true. In reality, it's not, you know, we hear about that quite a bit actually. So it definitely could be the case. That's very interesting. Yeah. So did you guys have anything else that you wanted to share or. Yeah. If anyone out there is in law enforcement and would know how to try to find the guy, uh, mm -hmm. obviously he needs to be stopped. Uh, yes. He's hurting, he's hurting people. He's uh, hurting reputations. Uh, if you know somebody, yes. you know, we, we, we can give a lot of information. We certainly have a lot. Oh, of we have a ton. We, yeah, we have a we ton. But we just don't know where he is. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I plan on stopping by the Oregon Law Center and speaking with someone and see what my options are. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there has there has to be something that can be done. Something. Um. I. I something. 
I don't know if, if he's, if he's got the time to call the police on me, then, then surely, surely the, there has to be some way to, um, because when I talked to the officer today, I, I told him my concerns about the child that's with them. And so <clears throat> my hopes was, my hopes are that, that, uh, you know, perhaps that his intention to try to come after me will flip around and go on him instead. <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, so I just, I'm so sorry that this is happening to you guys and I'm glad that you guys came. And I think everyone here is just, this is just, this is unbelievable. We've never heard of such a thing. And yeah, I didn't, I don't think he probably would ever, ever expected you guys to come and talk and, you know, I think he probably assumed that you guys would just, uh, you know, hunker down and he could continue on and with his trail of uh, defamation or what you want to call it. So James, we'll, we'll... Somebody's asking for Cody's last name. You did mention that. What, what was it? Uh, uh, Cody Wallace Bast. Bast? B-A-S-T. B-A-S-T. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, I called about that today. I called the police about that. Uh, maybe that was yesterday, and um, they confirmed there was a report on file, but th that was it. it. There was nothing else done about it, um, and I couldn't find anything additional on top of that. It's beyond that, um, I don't know where the photo of of that Cody came from, but sure it was interesting. Like it does it does mm -hmm. and and the mother too yes uh, they look identical the, the, exactly yeah mm -hmm. what i find telling is solomon you know, in the interviews that i've heard of him speak he he calls in he doesn't show his face he's not a video call like yes. brian and i are doing mm -hmm. but on his own channel he pictures his face he has his video his face on his videos yes yes so i find that, uh, find that very telling so of course of course we're gonna have this come up about the Megan Morris, <laughs> knew that was coming. Um, Megan's, Megan Morris going missing in Florida twice on the dates that David has on Facebook. It says she was 15 the first time and 17 the second. Did Brian know her or David? No, I, I had no idea who she was. So I, I've, yeah. heard, I've heard the name associated with me in the past. I mean, that happens, but I have no idea who she is. Yeah. Yeah. That was when he, when he heard about you coming, that was his immediate go-to was to throw somebody else out there. Um, yeah. Jennifer um, James, right? Or. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer James is the, the mother, alleged mother of that Cody. Yeah. And that was out of Washington right yeah. yeah from the, from the foster care in the early yeah parents. yeah yep and it's tough when when you get back that far it's so hard to find stuff online because back then there was no online <laughs> yeah yeah exactly 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 well if you if you guys don't have anything else to say i i, I don't have anything to put in there and i hope that you guys uh, got I don't know something from this, and at least it. Well, I greatly it, appreciate you, doing it. you. You are sharing the truth, and yeah, this guy, this guy is a menace, and people need to stop believing him. Simple as that. That's definitely for sure. Definitely for all, sure. All it takes is a uh, just some critical thinking skills. What's yeah, a basic a story? A Vietnam thing is just some basic <laughs> history. <laughs> you could just Google Vietnam War and find out it was over in the seventy-five or something. <laughs> and if you if you can pick a pick a few things that aren't true, that's enough to really put everything else in question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so sad. He's going to do this in your guys' names. That's and in the missing children for real, missing children and muddy up their cases. That's not all right. That is not okay. When when there's an active missing child, to go in there and start messing around. You're right about uh, that. What it does to their parents, or you know it. it yeah, that that's not all right. right. He's he's profiting off of others. Um, 
misery and misery yeah yeah and trauma and just yes stress yes yeah all right well if you guys want to like if you guys want to drop down um Okay, right, we really, I really appreciate you having me. Oh, so, it's not a problem at all. It's not a problem. I think, so your, research, I think your research is great. And uh, oh, thank I'm you. going to have to start following your channel now. <laughs> you've you've uh, earned one well, you've earned one more subscriber for sure. Hey, my That's tiny fun. channel. That sounds fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Angel. Right. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. we'll Blessings to you. you. Uh-huh. You too. Okay. Boy, that's a whole lot of something, isn't it? Holy cow. Ugh. Yeah. Isn't that just so super interesting? Um, I actually have some photos. I wasn't really going to talk about it or bring it up, but uh, I can. I, I suppose I will um, show some of these. I tried to verify uh, the story about Jennifer and Cody. Uh, I have a FOIA request in. I haven't heard back yet. So just to keep that in mind, let me see if I can find this here. Um, not saying we're, we're not saying that this is com it, it, not saying this is accurate at all, just to make it very clear here. Um, I looked everything I could. I looked into everything I could, could not verify that this person is missing. So let me go ahead and add this in here. Uh, I'll get myself out of the way. Um, obviously the photos, we'll look at the bottom. The photo on the bottom right hand is definitely um, David's mother. Um, and obviously the top two photos on are uh, David, but the, the child that was reported missing is Cody. And allegedly he was taken from his a foster home by his mother Jennifer, and so I've looked and looked. I can't, I can't find a whole lot about this. I didn't put this together, but I'll zoom in here. And if you want to take a look at the photos, they they do they do look awfully the same. So there's that. Hey J Dub, member for 19 years, uh, my 19 years, 19 months, been a long time, huh? So, so this is the, the person that, that they were talking about. Um, like I say, I called about this and uh, I couldn't get anywhere with it. I, I actually went to my local police department today and they did a search and um, uh, they, they couldn't find any missing child by that name. My, my local police did a nationwide search and couldn't find any child missing by that name. Um, so let me scroll down here to the bottom. This is uh, David's mother, I, for sure. This is a picture of Jennifer James. And the one thing I, I want to make a mention here is, you know, they don't necessarily look I identical, but you have to throw in a, a medical illness and some starvation and sort of having like a, a rough life, being homeless and transient and things over the course of over 10 years. Um, the thing that really gets me with this one is the smile lines, um, especially, you can see them here and here, um, the, the wrong angles, but they look, they look awfully similar. Um, yeah, the chin, yeah. So I, this is not confirmed. This is not a confirmed thing. It's just somebody knew about this story and put the photos together and it is what it is. So, but like I say, I try to, I try to verify anything about the story about them, Jennifer and um, Cody, and I can't find anything, but th this is, it's older, it's older things. So yeah. Um, so there's that. It's a lot, right? Let me uh, get this off of here and I'll get back in here. So I'm so glad you guys came. I'm so glad we got this done and out there. I'm sure that David is probably very angry with me right now. Um, that's okay. I don't mind. 
uh, yeah, the white eyes at the bottom. Yeah, that that really got me. Um, but you know, he is he's putting innocent people's lives in danger. Uh, I had like I had mentioned, um, one of the addresses that he gave out belongs to an elderly man that's just doesn't even know anything about anything. It just happens to be a neighbor, and so that elderly disabled man has been doxxed. So his life is now in danger and some random churches that aren't even involved have been doxxed and now they're in danger. And all of those churches um, attendees and the children that go to those churches are in danger. And the number of people that David has put into physical harm is astonishing, astonishing dozens and dozens and dozens of people, people that don't even know they're in danger are in danger. And that's very sad. And, I don't, I don't know what he thought gave him the right to, to do this, but it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I don't know if, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if something happened to David, but what he's saying is definitely not the truth. There's a little bit of truth here and there, but the overall story, putting all these people in here, that's not, that's not a true story. Little bits are true, but that's how liars work. They, they take a little bit of truth and then they spin a bunch of lies around that and, and make it seem plausible. So I'm glad this is done. I'm, I'm glad this is done. I'm, I really am interested in finding out about that missing boy. Um, but my, my number one priority, my number one concern right now at this moment is the child that's in the presence and being physically cared for by David and Amanda. It's my, it's of my opinion that that child is in danger, like severe danger being around these individuals who talking about the things they talk about so freely talking about harming children and kidnapping children and trafficking children and things. I'm very scared for the safety of that boy. Extremely scared. Um, I've told, I've called a lot of police departments today um, of, of places that I know that, that David and, and, or Amanda have uh, lived in just to let them know. And so maybe, maybe they'll find them, uh, maybe the, maybe somewhere they'll be found and they can do a welfare check. Um, I, I, I feel strongly that that if they are able to find them that that boy will probably go into cps custody for for some time period or something something needs to happen that boy needs to get evaluated to make sure he's not being brainwashed um in my opinion so so there we go yes that that boy it's scary that's a scary thing Whew. so there we go does anybody have anything else I can answer? I, I think it's all out there. Um, as far as I know, all the videos have been taken down, uh, the defamatory videos. Thank God. We need to, if you, if you happen to see this guy running around, just, he's dangerous. Multiple law enforcement agencies have deemed him an EDP. That's saying something. That's saying something. When you have detectives from, multiple states looking into him and, and determining he is a CDP. And one of the, the, one of the people that he had named as a police officer is, is a police officer, but, but he, this police officer is retired now, but, but his duty was, he would be called to uh, any kind of calls that involved a mental health concern. And he was at one point dispatched, this officer was at one point dispatched out for a mental health concern, welfare check with regards to David and his mother. So there's that. There's that. I don't, we don't know where he is. We, there's, we don't know where he is. And that's the problem. So I'm going to get out of here. This has been really hard on me reading 
reading the things and listening to the things that David has said, it's a lot to, to listen to. I, 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 to, to be a person that has that in their headspace and can talk so freely about those specifics about the way that child, that children are being harmed and abused. I, 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 that is a scary mind. That is a scary mind that I don't want to be in anymore. Um, I was, I've been crying about it a lot. I don't ever want to read that. I, I'm glad that I don't work for CPS. I couldn't do this. I, I could not do this on a daily basis. This is just too much. So I, I just want to close out by saying, please don't go stalk these people, any of them, including David and Amanda. That's the last thing we need is to turn it around and stalk them because then they actually become for real legitimate victims. And that's the last thing we want is for them to become victims. So please don't seek them out and harass them and tear them down because you're basically turning them into what they want to be as a victim. And that's the last thing that they should be because they are victimizers. Yeah. So be careful on YouTube. If you're a content creator that's here, or you're coming on the replay, please, for the love of God, you, you got to fact check this stuff before you start letting people just talk. Please do that. Please do that. It's so super important. So I love you guys and please share this out and I will talk to you all very soon. Take care.